Is in high school or the rest of it? Well, let's see. Shoe fits, as they say. So let's see. Anyway, so today in uh, one of my classes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very hard to, to... I'm going to speak about this a little bit in detail. It's very hard to get kids to think. It's hard enough to get adults to think, but it's almost possible to get kids to think. And even get kids to think when on the top level, on the bottom level, it's very, 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 very hard. So, there's one kid that I teach Shmuel in this class. Well, in particular, this particular class. And began to be in the Shmuel. Say the Shmuel, the book of Shmuel. I mean, I'm in the Shmuel. And I, I, the, uh, it says, when Chana Davin and Batis Balel, Chana Al Hashem, Chana Davin on God. So there's a question, which is, what does it mean, Al Hashem? It should be El Hashem, not on God, but rather to God. So the Radomsker, the Zifer Shlema, answers this. He says that, Chan Adavan Adavan the Shechina, on the Divine Presence. In other words, the Shechina is the, uh, the highest. If we have three Madrigas of Davan, everybody knows. The lowest level of Davan is to Davan for your own personal needs. The middle level of Davan is to Davan for... The needs of the keyboard, others, preferably, including you can include yourself. The highest level of diving is to dive in for the Shino, which is in gold. You don't dive for the Shino? And they let you towards the mech? What's in the middle? What's in the Shino? What? You're what? It doesn't say there that, that you, the Shekhinah is in Tzar. This was down in the Shekhinah because the Shekhinah is in Tzar. Yeah, it sounds like I want the Shekhinah to come in. It sounds like the third Shekhinah and then the Shekhinah is in Tzar. It does. It's very dangerous. Right. So I explained to them, you know, in Kabbalah there, masculine and feminine in Kabbalah is not the same thing as male and female in gender. Masculine means giving. Feminine means receiving. There's an aspect of our relationship with God which is most of it is masculine in the sense that most of it is God gives us. There's an aspect which is feminine, which is that God receives from us, and that's the Shechina, and the amount to which Hashem can relate to us. As it says, Hashem still Hashem has to reflect our attitude towards Him, and therefore the Shechina is in Golis as long as we're in Golis. The Shechina, the revelation of God's uh, relationship with us, cannot be manifest as long as we're in Golis. So, so to speak, the Shechina is in Tsar. Hashem is inside, yeah, so to speak. Again, we don't have, can't define Hashem emotionally, <coughs> but to bring these matters as close to understanding as possible, the Shekhin has an anguish that it can't relate to us directly. So, by the way, if I said this and I was a Chadian, and I believe it was, you know, I'd be, I mean, I've just lost my portion of the world to come. You know that, right? The Chadians believe that to ascribe any emotion to Hashem is heresy. We have discussed the Chadians, haven't we? The alien race. What? The alien race, yes. The alien race of my Monadans. Uh, there is. The ones in Paraguay, right? Yeah, the ones in Paraguay, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. What? No, no, they're my Monadans. They believe that Judaism stopped with the Rambam. And then any further developments were non developments. And they believe that the Rambam holds that any, if any, any, anybody, anybody ascribes any emotion to God, that person is, is consigned not to hell. That wouldn't be so bad. To oblivion, they cease to exist. They go poof, and they cease to exist after they die. So the um, Do they have a happy religion over? what? Do they have a happy religion? No, they they manage to differentiate religion and happiness. Religion is religion, and happiness can be you know you're playing ball. What? But they hold that Judaism culminated in its highest expression in Moses Maimonides. And they don't have Elu of Elu. They hold that if you're wrong, you will go poof. And that's that. So nice knowing you, right? For eternity, you won't be there. So they, um, it's not in Maimonides. Where were the two Maimonides at? Where were they? They're, they're aware that there's other that are, have other they don't people. count. Huh? They don't count. They weren't the Rambam. They weren't the Rambam. Did you get the light of that's what he's the Rambam? That's a good question. That already goes into Musa, but they don't believe Musa. <laughs> okay. 
by the way, guys, are so lucky that I'm a total zombie. I'm going about two hours of sleep during sleepers. So, therefore, I have no qualms about saying anything. Okay. This is the, uh, eight, the eighth Ratzel. So, the, uh, oh, yes. Right? No, that's part of the exhaustion. I don't, I don't care. Uh, do, you th- do you think we should stop? No, I was about to ask you a question about the politics of the issue here. No, but I'm, I'm, I'm so far from that right now. So, now, so there's this kid in this class. So, I just said the Shechina is in Tsar, which, if, uh, which in uh, Chadian. The Chadian religion is Avodah Zorah on several fronts. First of all, the Shekhinah separate from Hashem, and the Shekhinah and Hashem having emotions. So basically, total heresy. Okay, but those of us who are not Chadians know that God allowed us to sing unto him as if he has emotions, whether he does or not. And we, of course, we cannot define him emotionally. And we know that the Shekhinah is also something which God created as a mechanism for us to understand something about our relationship with him. So it's like a living metaphor. So the idea, the highest form of Donnelly is to die, but not for oneself, not even for Christ. But for the Shechina, which is the goal. And the truth is that our Torahs are all grounded in the ultimate Torah of the lack of Shechina. And therefore, that is the lack of Shechina. encompasses and transcends all other forms of Shechina. That's what I tried to speak on. That's why I said, Tzatil, 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 because I'm a dreamer. <laughs> so, um... Do you really have abstract ideas for us to get to comprehend? Yeah, if you only have to go to sleep, I think you can understand much better. So, anyways, there's one guy in the back of the class. So I said, I stopped, I said, listen, you guys didn't believe in God. So, so... One guy, so some guys say says, so yeah, some guys says no, so yeah, some guys go back to says, oh, I love God. So he said, why do you love God? Because two years ago he gave me a game cube. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I asked him, how long did it take God to give you the game cube? So it's how long are you asking God for the game cube? He said four years. So, he got two years ago, he was asking for four years. I said, okay, there's already a problem here. Do you really love God if it took him four years to give you a GameCube? I mean, he messed you up for those four years. Granted, he had two years of bliss, but what are those four years? And then I said, how do you think God loves you if he gave you something which is totally destructive for you? A GameCube wastes time, wastes the whatever little thought a person has, I understand it's, it's quite violent, right? The guys in the class are saying it was violent. I don't know. Huh? Uh, so, yeah. so the... Uh, somebody was saying that, that, that somebody said this guy loves killing people. So uh, maybe it's different. Than that. So, um, so he, he, he couldn't wrap his head around that. That... God, if God did give him the game cube, and that's why he believes there's a God, because there is a God who must love him because he gave him the game cube, the reality is loving a God who really must hate him. Because God is giving him a tool for complete, total self-destruction. Now, in the right circumstances, I think that can actually get, get, get somebody's thought process kicking. Uh, no? I think he did he was ju- he was jarred a bit. So not enough that he's gonna go home and just start thinking, Wow, you know, is my life meaningless? Should I talk to jump off the bridge, not jump off the bridge? I don't think we're getting that far. But uh I think that um I think that uh there that, that's my, that was my attempt in that um Until, I don't know, but yeah you see the thing is like this, I use the the shotgun approach always in these things. Meaning that a shotgun shoots, well, your machine gun is also a similar idea. A shotgun shoots numerous rounds at once, hoping that one will hit, right? So that's why I keep going throughout the year. I do that here too, you've always seen that, right? Just scattering random, random comments, maybe actually one of them will penetrate, you know, sink in and have some meaning. So, uh, 
scattered right approach. That's what it's called. So I can't, can't know if anything will have, a, will have an impact or not. But like I was talking to them, I said, I feel really bad for you guys because your davening is basically meaningless. So I said, they said, <laughs> so they said, they said to me, who says that that means meaningless? I said, you told me yesterday that means meaningless. And they said, no, that was yesterday. Today was different. So the, um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I, it's a big hole which these kids find themselves in. It's a very, very sad situation. Um, and most of them, of course, have, if you ask them to believe in God, it's impossible for them to give you an answer. There's one kid there was about Shuba, bless his soul. And he actually has some notion. He, really, he has to be loved alone in that class. But, um, sorry? What's going to happen? I had a friend who became about Shuba 13. People used to once think, you know that? People once one time used to actually think about things. Right, yeah. So the, uh,. I'm almost 100 years old. I think the whole family came up to the Um I think it's from Russia. It's from Russia originally. So they started earlier there. That's television. So the, uh, well, probably said about that was 40. Anyway, so that was my, my, um, interaction, um, this morning. Where, um, again, I try, it's, it's a great, a, a great experiment on my part. My great experiment, I think I've been put into these, into the netherworld to see what I can do with it, so I'm trying, right? So, um, um, you were, um, respond to the kids who, who don't believe in God, I don't know, right? Really That's great, I'm excited about that. At least we have people who don't believe in God, we have what to talk about. The most kids, of course they believe in God, because they doubt it. Because they, they were raised Jewish. Of course they believe in God. Then you have nothing to talk about. They're, they're brain dead. There's not much you can do. You know, once you can, once you can go to get on a track of thinking, then there's, uh, there's nothing to talk about. And, um, this afternoon, so I taught in the local, the local yeshiva, in which I teach in the afternoon. And so, first I teach seniors. And so I had an interesting discussion with one of the seniors. I'm showing them a movie now. Called expelled. Did I show you guys ever expelled? We should do expelled. We should. We should do um, expe- expelled. is all about uh, intelligent design versus evolution. Very well done. The documentary, but it's put by this very funny guy, Ben Ben Stein. Yeah, Ben Stein. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so the. Um, so, so, actually, uh, they got into an interesting argument with me. This is a fair argument, which is that, um, I mean, it's a classic argument. They just don't realize how absurd it is. If, if there's a million, billion, trillion, quillion, quillion chance that something can happen, so it can happen. So that's what happens. Right? So it's hard for them to wrap, even these bright kids, it's hard to wrap their idea around the notion. That things which have a billion, quintillion, trillion chance of happening don't happen. So I tried to say to the kids, listen, there's more of a chance that, um, that the world came, that the world came into existence, there's more chance that the world came into existence by means of evolution is the chance that this jacket, I'll now take off and put it on the table, put it over here, and it will jump up and immediately start choking me. <laughs> right? Now, they said, the kid said, the kid said, that's not going to happen. It's impossible. Right? He said, no, there's much more of a chance of this immediately game. The molecules in here ready. Well, the molecules can get together. They can all get up and they're ready sleeves. They can put their, the, the molecules can get together and, you know, they can push the sleeve so the sleeve jumps up and the sleeves go around my throat and starts helping me, right? They can. There's much more of a chance than that than when there's not even molecules that they're actually going to form the cells and the DNA and all those things which are going to happen. So, the, but the kids, the, there's a mistake in the sense statistics. You think if there's a chance something happens, then it's going to happen. It's not true. Actually, as, the longer something doesn't happen, 
doesn't make it more likely that it's going to happen, it makes it less likely that it's going to happen. This is what you reverse the game of the child today. If you think that, that, that if you're at a roulette table and you see black come up, that you think there's more of a chance that red's going to come up, and that's actually not true. Right. This is just a chance. Right. It's black or red's going to come up. Right. Uh, it's only in, in a limited sampling that, that, that the chances can improve, but not in an infinite sampling. So, um... What do you mean? Like, it's one out of a million, is that the same thing, or not? It's not a failure, it's one out of a million. One million relatively good chances to relative to the uh, re- odds of your willing to be lot- winning the lottery, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um... So, it's just a big number, but it's not a big number. It's not a big number, yeah. Even one in a million is not a good, ch- is not really a chance. It's that in the lottery, the way it works, somebody has to win. It's a finite, it's a finite sample. Right? So the, um, so the, so that, so, we got all this discussion about this and the whole, old Grim Noch Weinberger thing, be a judge, and Weinberger not be a judge, not a lawyer. This whole new concept for these guys because, why? Well, not just at the firm, but the yeshiva system, as I said to them, the yeshiva system tra- trains us to be lawyers. Right? We argue with our Abayim, we argue with ourselves, we argue with the, the Rashi. That's the way we're supposed to learn. We're supposed to argue with everybody. And we're supposed to defend our positions, even though they might be absurd. Because through argumentation, that's how we accomplish understanding. So, of course, it's very hard for something like that to ever actually come to think about something objectively. That's a big problem. Okay, that was class number two. Now, Class number three today, which was, was fascinating, was the last class I gave. So I started to teach you this last class I gave is called Global History. Can I speak to you about this? What? This class history. Today I said it was really horrendous. So today I, I, I figured out finally, was finally, hey, that's Hopper, what? you're an idiot. Go to your old mainstay. When in doubt, No, no, what I do in, in other schools. No. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm really at the What? No. <laughs> that I do all the time. Use movies. Oh, <laughs> so I got a, I got a movie about the Nile, for, for, for the, for, for the next section, section already, about the Nile River. So, uh, as they're watching the movie about the Nile River, I started writing questions aboard and wanted them to answer the smart in a, in a quiz. And they got so flustered and so, so annoyed and so incapable of dealing, which was so much fun to watch. Where I, I wrote that the, the, the movie said that the, the, the natives perceived the Nile River as having moved. You know what it was. A lot of water, a little bit of water. So, another board question. How could the fact that the river is perceived as having mood lead people to be over there by the Now, they, they were totally discombobulated by the question. Because our tendency is to totally, again, in Yeshiva, but I assume everyone else as well, is you can't do that. You can't put a Hebrew word like a Vodazara into a question having to do with an English subject. That's cheating! How can you do something like that? You know how to actually make these things relevant to each other. And I also, um, I wrote that, it said at one point in the movie that said there were fights between the nomadic her- herders, those people who are shepherds, who want to shepherds, and farm- farmers. So I wrote on the board, the question that said, why would there be fights between them? And who would be right according to Torah law and why? Now, what's the answer? I think farmers. Farmers are right. Where, where, where is it in Torah law? Uh, by, by Abraham. Excellent. By Abraham and Lot. By Abraham and Lot. Lot, Lot, Lot. Abraham and Lot were nomadic herders. Right? They had, they were nomads, and they had herds of animals. And loads no herds were going and were eating other people's fields. And Avram rebuked him over it because he said, it doesn't belong to us, it belongs to those people. What? 
Going around, she went right. Now, the other, the other part of the question I wrote is, is not fair, but that doesn't mean, doesn't stop me. Why? Now, here's a why. Why is it sort of this way? Get into history. And this is where I want to show how history is an integral component of our understanding of Judaism, and vice versa. Because in history, farmers are always more civilized than hunter-gatherers. And the reason why they're more civilized is because their food supply is much less dependent on the whim and accidents of nature. It's much it, because it's cultivated. So therefore, it is a much more likely, not not that food, of course, but much more likely to grow, uh, to, to flourish even in adverse circumstances. So what the Torah is telling you is telling you that we look with favor on the establishment of this agrarian, this farming society, even at the expense of all those nomadic herders. I don't actually expect any of them to get the answer to this question. But, and there is no real right answer. It's a short question, which is another thing which drives them crazy, which is, Generally speaking, the way we have managed to ruin the educational system, it's amazing what grown-ups can do to education. What grown-ups have done to ruin the education system is made a test into a test of knowledge. There's no thinking involved. The more you think, the worse off you are. The moment you ask them a thought question, they go crazy. They can't deal with that. They, they don't know the answer. They need to have specific data or approach or resolution which they can get back to. They cannot be expected to and assert that they should not be expected to actually. So, one time, there's another thing that I want to give, which is I asked them, I asked them, in the movie it said that when they were trying to find the sources of the Nile River, so it took many hundreds of years to find it. So I asked them, and many people who were dead, the, the kill was very dangerous. So I asked them, what aspect of a human being it drives a human being to embark on these dangerous missions of exploration? Yeah. I don't think they can even deal with that. Fame, curiosity. Is that <laughs> 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 I think like high school kids. No. And is it designed for designed to uh, in that person or something? What? The curiosity, improving and learning things are just in the Curiosity, but curiosity itself has to do with the very core nature of human beings. The core nature of human beings is questing. Purpose, meaning? And exploration gives life meaning. Even if it's in the end, you're going down to Africa to explore to Tanzania, and you get killed by pygmies. Right? But what did you, what did you accomplish? We knew about Tanzania, and you got killed by pygmies too. You're an idiot, right? No, life was meaningful. As that arrow, that, as that poison arrow penetrates your body, you can think to yourself, I was involved in the quest. Right? Now, and quests are protective, are foolish, but quests are quests. They are cool things. They are significant. They make people feel significant. One more question? So the, um, so then, there was, um, well, we asked me to about the story. Wait, one second, another full question. There was a, uh, in the movie, they, they, they said that one of, the, one of the big explorations of the 19th century was the quest to find the source of the Nile River. So they said that there were uh, there was a, uh, there, there were ancient legends that there were mountains of snow from which the, the Nile came. But nobody ever seen these mountains of snow. So they doubted their existence until, surprise, they found them. So I asked them, what is knowledge of the agents Ancients indicate concerning the concept of Masora. They made no more than What? They made no more than Ancient, that means that ancient accounts 
are not just based, if they're passed on, are very often based on a significant sources or issues which existed. Now, that in itself is just a small minor point. What? Sorry? We're saying that there are people that observe the same thing in other areas. No, of course, the, the notion, the, 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 the only evidence in the context, but the tradition preserves truth. What? Like the Mabu, where there are multiple stories, yoga and so. Mm-hmm. Then you have stuff like this, where people say something like that, after these things, Who told Atlantis existed? You know, a lot of people actually thought it was... No, the, the same people think that they didn't... That's... that's the you all see? Yeah. You read the astronauts class to the moon? Yeah. Okay. So the same people... <laughs> close on there. They, uh... So the same people who believe that astronauts didn't get to the moon, they believe there's a science. What? Well, I think they got to the moon. What? You don't believe they did? Of course I believe they did. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. But you, the amateur. What? I'm always suspicious of ardent Republicans. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm not a Republican. Not libertarian. Libertarian. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't like Democrats either. But don't get me wrong. I don't like Democrats or Republicans. I think the whole whole American concept of two political parties is absurd. But nobody's any better. So there's not much you can do about it. Um, no. I'm a socialist. I thought they were on Paul Ben. A socialist. <laughs> but where's the line between communism and fascism? I actually wanted to be talking about that tonight. Mm-hmm. I say I want to be even talking to you about it in the next couple of days. But before we get there, before we get into that conversation, so. Can I ask a question about this? Right. Right. This, what I try, what, what I don't think, I, I will not be successful doing this. I know I'm not going to be successful. What I'm trying to, to indicate is, to these kids, is how history and Torah can go together. In fact, there is no Torah without history. Because all Torah is a historical document. And it reflects history and it is framed in history. And therefore, to understand Judaism, to understand Yadis, to understand Torah, you must understand history. If you don't understand history, you cannot understand anything what it says in the Torah. That's what I'm trying to get this, because this is same question which kids ask, 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 even, uh, ask me in the past couple of days and say, why do we need to know history, especially ancient history, which might actually might have a good question about, but why do we have to know any history? It's not going to make us any money. This is a good point. Being a historian does not make people very good money. But, nevertheless, one is must know history because... T- what? They are unrelated to making money. Yeah, but chemistry, let's say, they can see how remotely, somehow, indirectly, it might lead them to make money. Right, I understand, but no, most of them are not going to become teachers nowadays. So, we don't listen to music sometimes? Them money, right? huh? No, they make money to listen to music. Or they make money with they then don't spend on the music. Yeah. Yeah. So look, in any anyway, I, I I know that my lifelong love of history comes from having had a good ninth grade history teacher. That actually made history exciting for me. I don't know if I'm able to do that myself, especially not for this crowd. But these are the things I've been trying to pass the, over the past couple of days. Yeah. Another question with regards to what making people think. So the problem would be when you have a standardized question, you do something that's true or false question, it's not the most precise question. The first thing you stop is thinking, what is the question I'm thinking first? Because many of the times you don't know how to answer the right question, you have some big things. When you, are start, when you actually start thinking about questions, and you go to the professor, the professor tells you, just don't think about it. Uh, That's why the regions, the regions in the state of New York are a blessing and a curse. They're a blessing because there is a region's curriculum which needs to come, come out, 
It's very hard to come out of college a complete and total nitwit. You can come out only partially nitwitted or with me, but the, um... The other states have been doing a problem with that. What? The other states have been doing a problem with that. Do they have any equivalency? Oh, they do? Yeah. Yeah, I see a lot of them do have problems, though. Okay. The, the, the flaw in the region is that it's in accurate history. Anything which is in a, any textbook, this is the story, any textbook is inaccurate. Yeah. 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 What are you asking? What's that? I comment that question first. Comment. Um, uh, I think that kids like thinking, but I think that because there, there, there is such, such a, a focus on grades and marks, that the only way you can you, you can give a mark, you know, is if you have a specific question, a specific answer that you memorize. Um, and and I also um, right, that's how the system puts kids into autopilot. Right. But I think kids like thinking. It's what it's about. Like if you're just thinking for no grades, and, and, and you know, I don't know. But uh, what what is it? The, the Torah before creation, like the Torah, like we have, or what is it like? If history, if history came out differently, would it be different? Well, you know what the Gros says in the last eight, eight, I'm still giving the Torah. It says that Yoshua wrote them the Dema. So the Dema, normally you translate as mixed up. You didn't write those in order because the events hadn't happened yet. But the way uh, the Chazal tells us that the Dema means he, not, he wrote them mixed up, like Shulam Medumat. Shulam, which is mixed into other um, substances. And um, the reason, well, the, the reason, the the Kriyaka, I believe, is what it says. That he, the reason he says it that way is because he's trying to tell us that um, I didn't say the Kriyaka. I made a mistake. Uh, the Gro, the Gro said that the reason why I said it was, was trying to tell us that the Torah is written in Shemayim. In the Tirufe Otios, in the form of the letters, which we have in earth are we were created, which are permutations of the various names of God and names of perhaps angels also, I don't know. But when it comes down to earth, it takes on the mundane form of the Torah, which is, to, which is in front of us. It takes on that mundane form after the events are happened, the letters are reassembled in order to present to have the first have the Torah which we have. But, we're Christ will not touch it. The Torah might have written it totally different way. Does that answer your question? Yeah. I want to add something to this, which is famous Ramban in the past in Kapasha. There's a fellow, uh, I don't know if it's very true or not, but it's a cool story. There was a Ramban had a panel in it, whose name was Avner. Avner was a bad boy. Avner was, went to OTD. And one day Avner meets the Ramban and he says, you know, Ram, Ramban, Rebbe. He's going to give it away. You know, you know why I went to OTD? So I'm like, oh, why is you OCD? So he said, once you heard, heard you, um, Gart me No, no, no. Different story then. That's not a story I'm about though. You want equal time, I'll let you tell your story. But, um, I don't mind. But the, um, so, the Ramban it said, so, so, uh, so he said, you know, I heard you darshing that uh, everybody has a plus and plus. And I heard you darshing once, I'm not sure the same story, different story, um, no, that's the story. Everybody has a plus and plus, everybody's alluded to in the Torah. And I said, no way, Jose, I'm alluded to in the Torah. His name is Asma. So, are you sure I'm alluded to in the Torah? Right? So, um, He, uh, Ramban Davin, 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 Persia. And finally, Hashem shows him the Pulsing's Passage to Parsha. Oh, my pen is leaking. Trust. Guys, you know, you gotta tell me when you see my pen leaking. Looks bad. I didn't see the Shem there was What? Yeah. Looks bad on the camera. Okay. I have this open for a state. The Shem there was talking. I apologize. Okay. The, uh, it says, it says, the last instruction, it says, Amarti, Afehem, Ashbisa, 
Bnei Enosh Zichram. I said I will deal with them my anger. I will eliminate from among people their their memories. So he said. Nice brothers. I think the second one is really with three hours. No, I got it wrong. Yeah, it's probably wrong for me. Got it? No. read that. Afayem, the third letter is knowledge. Hashbisa, the third letter is a bay. May and Nosh, the third letter is a nun. Zichram, the third letter is a resh. Aleph, they nun, resh. Avner. So, a few days later, he sailed away in a boat and was never heard from again. So that's Amati Afayem. I said, in my anger, I'm going to eradicate their memory from the midst of human beings. From the midst of human beings. So, oh, in Shemaim, it wasn't written like this. In Shemaim, it's not written. It's written in what looks like, like mumbo jumbo, like mixed up. That's what the girl is saying about the last eight letters. When when Yoshua received, when Moshe received them from Hashem, he received them mixed up because the events hadn't happened yet. When the Torah came into actual decoding, so to speak, that's when it was written out in the form we have it today. If it was the same number of letters as there are, the same exact letters? Yeah, but we lost letters along the way. There's a very famous mar, famous mar, it's famous again because I know it, in which, which where Rebbe Lezor uh, was very, was very pure, poor. It's actually Mishra Bezi Elvis. And he says to Hashem, listen, as he says in the fiddle on the, fiddle on the, fiddle on the roof, would it... Would it sunny my... Would it sunny flow from heavenly plan if I were a wealthy man? Right? So it was when Hashem says, would it flow from heavenly... Would it flow from heavenly plan if I were a wealthy man? So it was when Hashem says to the he says, it was a thing. With Tzolcha, do you want a folk ha om kulo tova vol? So it means I was upside down and start from scratch. Who lied? Maybe you'll come out with man oisha at a time, you'll come out with time of witches. 
So the Vesper goes bonkers on this. He says, what do you mean, fool? Are you a god? Make sure when you make him next time around that you make him rich. So the Vesper says, says, no, everybody has their own model, their own flow of circumstances, which is tailor-made and customary for their nation. And it could be that if the dudes have the laws are being wrong over again, the next time he's also in Shafts is going to have to be poor. Because his character, his time, his place was a place of poverty. Maybe yes, maybe no. It depends on, on what the situation is then. That's how Hashem says, Ulai, maybe. So, oh, one second. All these things are embedded in the Torah. They're embedded in an even more obscure way in the Tiluf Osio, the, 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 the formations of the letters with which heaven and earth are created. They're, 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 uh, they're embedded in also a less obscure way, which is this way, which for us is also obscure. Right? And they're embedded in an even less obscure way in Tersh Malpeh. So Tersh Malpeh is something which we generate. So therefore we have complete access to it. So we have to, we have to base on the principle. So yeah. Prayer what? Prayer can change anything. That's true. So that's the right about that too. But but uh, I'm I'm digressing before I answer your question. That's right. He says. We have a famous goes, Mishana Moka Mishana Mazel. You change places, you can change your flow. Your flow, what we call Mazel, Mazel Tov, the flow is the flow which is coming down to you from heaven at this point in time. It could be a Mazel Tov, which is a good flow, Mazel Ra, bad flow. When somebody has things good going good for him, we say, oh, Mazel Tov, you're getting a good flow from heaven, and that flow from heaven continues you. That's a Mazel. Mazel is what's under the liquid or flowing. It's not just what. It's of for a certain type of influence. So, we have a picture that says, Mishana Mokka Mishana Mazel. If you change place, you change Mazel. Right? So why does it always work? I could change place. When's the last time I told the story about me and the Makubo? Recently, right? No. The Makubo in Chicago. I do with my daughter. Yeah, but he was, it was not located there. He wasn't based in Chicago. No, Makubo. It's, it's all over the country. It's in California. No, Makubo. I don't want to say talk about Chicago right now. But Chicago is famous for having had a chief rabbi, the Rebaz, one of the great Tamir Homan, who was run out of town, had to take the train out on Shabbos because the mafia threatened his life. Because he was dabbling in giving, making sure that kosher was actually kosher. So that's the beautiful history we have behind us in Chicago. Anyway, so there was this a traveling itinerant uh, Makubo who came from some place who remained, na- uh, remained nameless. So someone, one of my friends told me he's a real guy. You have to go see him. He's a real guy. He's a real Makubo. What? So... The story of what? The story of what? The story of what? The story of what? Oh. Which one? I haven't heard it. <laughs> oh, so why am I repeating it? I asked if anybody heard it. You were just... Uh, what? No. That's eternal That's where it goes? Uh, the answer is yes, it might. Right? But anyway, so I went to... Uh, so I, here I was, you know, a young... I you know, a, a young whippersnapper, and I was learning to show me. I was learning Kabbalah. That's been quite, 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 you know... Oh, I'm going to meet a real, 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 uh, meet a real life Makubo. So tell me the secrets of the universe and how I can succeed and give you a book when you found me. Anyway, when I came, he started, she told me, so started giving me the regular book. You should have the kids, should have, be healthy, wealthy. You should have Nachas uh, You should make a lot of money. And I thought there was a, this was a disconnect here. I didn't care about all that. Right? The heck with the kids. I wanted to learn and teach you, Shalmi, and I wanted to be Machadish to the Torah, and I wanted to know the secrets of the Torah. So, we were not going in the same way. Here. Finally, he says to me at some point, he says, uh, he sees his night, he sees he's dealing with a skeptic here. So he, he says to me some Torah, which I, I, 
some quasi Kabbalist advice for her, which I was not impressed with and I don't remember. Then, he, he, obviously, he was utterly desperate, so he, the plural stops. He says, he has to move. So, obviously, I, I was taken aback. He saw I was stunned. So he said, I, 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 I don't mean he necessarily has to move. Yeah, you know, your wife, she might want to redecorate. Redecorate. She might want to move something in the kitchen from one side of the room to the other. Move from one side of the room to the other. There's a change. So, uh, okay, yeah. I was very skeptical about the whole thing by this point, and I was totally uh, uh, miserable. I tried to gain the check, which, of course, is ultimately uh, critical to its process. And, yeah, I, I gave him 36, that's all. Yeah, I, I decided he doesn't deserve more than that. So the... Uh, so then I left. Uh, so uh, so the, what leaves me, of course, hanging in the air is that shortly afterwards I left Chicago. So who knows? Maybe he was on for something. Maybe. Maybe not. Anyways, the reason I mean this up is because Mishana Moka Mishana Mazel means. Here I am working for a job. That's for us. There are people that have no job. They're really good. Wait, wait, wait. You know the famous rabbi who said once that everybody went high, high, down. He was a lot of... 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 So the... So anyway, so what I wanted to say is that... I don't want to say. Um, Quasi. Chicago. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Kubo? Not right. So, Mishana Makam Shana Mazel. It says, you change, the, the places you'll change your Mazel. Well, it's not just magic. What? It's not just uh, a... Anything which, which is done by a sudden, which can be, can, can, can be defined as a prayer, it's not necessarily, it won't be considered magic. Lots of time. Oh, yeah. If the Makubal knows how to dive into Hashem and get things he wants. Yeah, so I do the lady has to move. Or move things from home. You asked me questions about a practice which struck me as very strange to begin with. So how am I supposed to answer that? No, but you went and you did it. I didn't move because he told me to move. No! <laughs> So I did find out of Chicago there. Uh, 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 so anyway, so um, so he was sort of desperate because it depends what my model is. If my model is what I mean, my lot, my destiny in the world is to learn how to throw out of poverty. Then no matter where I go, I'm still going to be poor. That's just a good thing. Maybe you'll be poor next time around in a situation which we can make you rich. However, if my model is to my, to my test, my destiny is to learn how out of adversity, so if you live in Uzbekistan, then your then your adversity is that you're poor. If you live in Great Neck, then your 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 adversity is that you're rich. So the test is that you learn to out of adversity. The, it's the case of adversity changes. Has the highest change of people, not because of all the other factors. Occasionally, you know, because it's money. Because I'll say no. Because what? It will be too big to be saying. Yeah. Zarbin Nei Aimin. Shemans says to tell me so. I just wanted to tell over one of my 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 famous jokes before we end tonight for tonight before we ask questions. It's only only indirectly relevant, but it's a famous. It's one of the few jokes that I know. So therefore, I want to tell it over. Okay. So. It just just came up in my head because of the contrast between the uh, Makubo and non Makubo. So, um, the Bakal learning in Prashma, the Ksav Tsefer's Yeshiva, he steals the spoon. Who remembers the story? I got washing the hands and drying the hands and something. Yeah. He steals the spoon. So, um, you know, the Ksav Tsefer shows that. No, I got backwards, you're right. Darn, I gave it away. See how bad I am at telling jokes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, it's a buff in Pressburg, right? He, uh, he's, he's seen in walking and shooting the girl. 
Rashid is Sav Sefer, so it's Rosh Hashanah, so it's Rosh Hashanah, it's no choice. So, uh, because we don't do these things there. But here, there's Yeshiva in Frankfurt where such things happen. So, you go learn in Frankfurt. So, he goes to learn in Frankfurt. So, when he goes to learn in Frankfurt, he's caught one day stealing a spoon in the house in which he was staying. So, the Rashiva, Rabbi Boyer, or calls on and says, listen, I have to kick you out. No choice. But you sure I'm not kicking out because you stole the spoon. I'll kick you out because you're an idiot and you'll never become a Talmud Chacham. What's my evidence? Were you to have stole the spoon in Pressburg and walked with the girl in Frankfurt, nobody would have cared. Anything would have been fine. Well, you're, you're stupid. You wa- walked with the girl in Pressburg and stole the spoon in, spoon in Frankfurt. So you can never, never be a Talmud Chacham and I'm just giving up on you now. Anyway, I was going to ask. I don't know if it's true. Yeah, I don't know. That's why you might yeah. have a general relationship with the issue of person with that person that does care to you to be going on with girl? Yeah. No? no. Like they weren't against it. Was there somebody here? Or was there somebody? Yeah, somebody here. So I am, but there was none of that, yeah. Um, well, well, how come, how come you year up from that says read calculated every year if it's kind of... Based on, uh, it's a good question. We'll mail talk about tomorrow night. We only recalculate every day. Really? Yeah. We talk about that tomorrow night because I have to go, have to go tonight. Uh, it's like my GPS every five minutes. <laughs> yes. Actually, it's, uh, it, it's like that. It was, I, I, I actually compiled some Iron McClendon's on that. So I'll see you about tomorrow night, okay? Okay.